This is Twit. Uh, I see Cody on the line. I don't think we've talked to uh, Cody ever before. All right, Cody, I'm going to press this button and press that button, and you have to accept, and then you will be in like Flynn. <laughs> By the way, do you know the story? You're an old man. You should know what in like Flynn that comes from. That is something I have heard my grandpa say before, but yeah. I don't know what it comes I from. I am his grandpa's I'll be honest. age, I should point out. Uh, look up Errol Flynn someday, and you'll see what in like Flynn means. Now, let's see if we've got Cody on the horn. Cody on the horn. Ho-ho. Cody, where are you calling? Well, you see, I see. Oh, there's Cody. There he is. I see him in. He's using his phone, which I love, and trying to talk to us. You can turn it sideways, believe it or not, and it will fill up the. Screen. Oh, it's a big Cody. Where are you calling from, Cody? Duluth, Minnesota. Uh, can you show us the outside? Is it real snowy and cold and freezing and everything? Oh. Yeah, it's it's pretty snowy, pretty cold. Miss the snow. Michael, you miss that, Micah, don't yeah, you? Yeah, I do. I miss oh. the snow so much. What's up, Cody? What can we do for you today? I'm so glad you called us. Yeah, so I have a question. I was actually hoping to get in uh, on one of your last radio shows, and I never quite made it because you guys were so busy and popular. <laughs> well, it's a little easier these days, I hope. Yeah, so this goes back. I actually called in, I think, early 2020. COVID had just started, and I was trying to stay busy with backing up some old photos and things like that. And what I originally called about then, that project's done. Now I'm at a point now where I have so many photos backed up, and we have a two-year-old who's going to turn three oh, so a lot of pictures of our you know only child that i'm running out of storage space in in a few locations was oh, he was boy. your was he born in covid during campaign yes yeah, so wow she was she was born uh valentine's day of 2020 oh, so right before just before <gasps> just before <sighs> thankfully you had all these dreams of going to disneyland <laughs> going to the park yeah. Well, I'm glad I'm things, glad she's here. Things didn't exactly turn out uh, the way we thought. It you know, was she's to. so little that she pr probably at this still wasn't too affected by yeah. it yet. Uh, Fingers crossed. Goes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So what's yeah. what? So you got a lot of photos. Yeah. So I I think I have maybe a little bit of an advanced setup. Maybe I give you a little bit of background. Um, I have a Synology four bay uh, NAS at my house uh, with I think eight to nine terabytes of effective storage. For the total array perfect and i'm backing that up to a, a separate synology nest that's actually at my mother's house so you know the whole is my house something happens tornado fire whatever uh, hopefully that's another you know backup means nice um, in addition to that i'm using iDrive. Well, hey, you said the only issue is i'm up to four terabytes now of, you know, <laughs> use of what holy is eight, available eight There's or nine a lot of available. video along with that photo holy. unless you're just <laughs> <laughs> yeah so i'll share a scenario like christmas this year for example i remember thinking back to my old home videos with when my you know dad had his old camcorder and it's fun to look back at some of those. So mm -hmm. I do that now. So when my daughter's old, she can look back oh, and you know, say, oh, remember these fun times. Yeah. But I have a habit of shooting everything, you know, 4K and 30 frames or 60 frames a second. Because your daughter, she's going to have a, you know, a 23K TV. Right. So <laughs> it's just going to say, why exactly. did dad shoot 4K? God, it's so <laughs> blurry. Thank God the upscaling <laughs> chip in here yeah. is all AI power. Yeah. In the old days, it was all 2D. I don't, I don't <laughs> understand, uh, you know. That's great. It's so good you're doing that. But yeah, it does start to fill up, especially those videos. Uh, you're, I think, so what's the problem that you're seeing? Is it just too much? Well, I, I can just see that, you know, that this four bay NAS that I bought about yeah. a year ago. Yeah. It was a bit of an investment and I had to, you know, talk my yeah, wife into it. Expensive. Said it wasn't it's like a whole Throwing computer. money at something we didn't need. Um, and I, I can see, you know, that's going to get eaten up and I'm going to need a, something bigger, you know? So is there, a, is there a better process? Is there a uh, compression tool somewhere? Is there something else I should be considering or a best practice? I, you know, the, what's wild is there's someone here who knows a whole heck of a lot about taking photos and videos. And I am curious about the backup process. Yeah, why don't you go over uh, to the, the radio corner and help us out here. Because we're curious if you've Aunt got a Pruitt, lot our of photos. Host hands -on photography has probably some solutions. I can tell you what I do. I also have a Synology, and Synology does have a Photos app that's a decent yep. replacement for Amazon or Google. Um, honestly, I still use the cloud. Uh, I have All my photos are backed up to Google Photos because I have a Pixel phone. I have unlimited 
back up there. Amazon, if you have an Amazon Prime account, also unlimited there. I wouldn't, tr I wouldn't trust that they're always going to be around, but for the interim, uh, they survive. I think the, I think the Synology is a great way to do it. You know what I ended up doing with my Synology when I got a new one. <laughs> that's in your future probably <laughs> but i got a new one i took the old one to work here oh. and synology has a, a tool called hyper backup that lets you synchronize two synologies mm -hmm. so i have my synology at home backing up everything and then at its leisure in the background it synchronizes with the synology here so they're actually duplicate and i am now fairly confident unless a bomb hits petaluma right uh, in which case it <laughs> probably doesn't, doesn't matter, matter. yeah <laughs> but uh that i will have uh everything and, and the photos it's a really good example of something you really always always want to keep around uh aunt pruitt is uh is a professional photographer they have an even higher burden you know you do a wedding you would darn well better not uh lose those photographs hey aunt hello sir i'm so glad you're here in your clemson orange beautiful orange right yeah <laughs> yeah that's gorgeous so I'm sure you've addressed this on uh, hands-on photography. What do you What do you recommend? What was I'm sorry I couldn't hear the question. Here He's got in the a lot. Studio. Well, basically, I didn't have any cans on? Oh, well, basic. So you just sit there. What are you doing? Uh, you I just, stare. I, I watch paint dry over here on the studio. That's all. Yeah, we love you. I can't. You know, you're so nice to come in and, and help us out on this. I really appreciate it. Um, he has a two-year-old and has a lot of 4K video, a lot of photos. He's got two terabytes now oh boy. of content. He's been backing it up to a, a, a Synology, which is is big, but, yep. but it's good. he's going to run out because it's only a four-bay Synology at some point. One thing to look at, I should mention, uh, 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 that is good about Synology, and you have to check which Synology you have, but, uh, Cody, many of these Synologies, you can connect an external additional uh, without getting a okay. new synology exactly um, just daisy that's, chain that's why when you look at the Might model yourself yeah the, you look at the model number the first part is how many total drives and the second part is the year so if okay. so if you if your model number is 22 23 it can handle 22 drives now you don't have 22 drives but that's with an extender yep. and then it's sure. the year 23 so one thing you could just get more storage and the synology i you know is is pretty reliable unless there's a fire or something that physically destroys it it's pretty reliable and backup and what do you do it's funny you say that because i was going to mention the same thing it's just daisy chaining because getting a, an additional nas can be really expensive it sure is. Um, and then hot swapping with larger drives is another option but again it could be a bit costly at times so yeah. uh, a lot of times just getting an extra uh, connection to your existing nas is a good option and do you use any compression okay. stuff like uh, to, to archive things that, you know, for you've video, got 100,000 photos and you know you're not going to look at all 100,000? For video, I do not compress, but for photos, uh, Lightroom has a tool built into it, Lightroom Classic, that is. I take all of my raw files for the previous year and convert those raw files into compressed DNG files. And that allows me to still retain a lot of data just in case I need to go back and pull that those photos back up and retouch them and send them out again. I have that option of doing that without losing uh, quality. Here's an example. If you had a, a Synology, uh, for instance, uh, 1517, uh, this would be the year 2017 and a 15 drive Synology. It only has four or five drives, but you could buy the extender that it had another additional five drives. Now, spousal acceptance factor is still an issue because <laughs> yeah, that doesn't it, gets pricey. it doesn't include the drives. <laughs> Uh, I mean, it's a little less expensive because it doesn't include the brains either, mm -hmm. but uh, it's gonna sure. it's gonna add up. But that is one way to expand uh, the Synology. I ended up uh, every every about five years, Synology makes enough of it. Synology is what we call a NAS network attached storage. It's a basically a headless computer. It doesn't have a keyboard, mouse, or monitor. It connects to your network, but it has a processor in it. It has RAM in it. It has a lot of storage. That's the chief benefit. It's got a ton of storage. And you connect it to your network, and you can use it for a lot of things, serving media. A lot of people put Plex on it to serve media. You can use it to backup, of course. Uh, you could put backup software on all your systems, including your phones and your tablets, and it will automatically all back up to the Synology. And then you can, as, as, as uh, you're doing, you can hook up the, the Synology software to iDrive and have it back up to the cloud, which gives you really a pretty good, that's that 3 to one backup we talk about where you have three copies of everything two different storage media and one at least is off-site 
And when you look at your online backup services, check check out their terms and, and, and services because sometimes you'll see in the fine print that if you remove a drive from your home system, and even though you may have already backed it up to the cloud, once you remove it from the home system, that cloud service will say, hey, that drive doesn't exist anymore. So they will take it off. Wow. So okay. keep that in mind. Good yeah. Time. Yeah. I, you know, uh, yeah, it's... Uh, so it sounds like what I would do in this situation, it's belt and uh, if, I, if I'm understanding, is, what I would do. <laughs> is yeah. I yes. go on Amazon, well, I go wherever, once a year, and I buy an external drive, I mark it with the year, I plug it into my Synology, for, and this is for the year past, so it's 2023, so then all of 2022 or 2021's photos and videos go onto this drive, mm -hmm. and then I've freed up a bunch of space. And then I've always got those external ones that are separate from the, yep. na the NAS that I'm regularly pulling from. As an archive. Because the logic is you're not going to necessarily grab that stuff quickly from last year. You know, mm -hmm. it's the same idea that I have with my photos. I, I'm pretty sure I'm not going to open up something from 2021 today and Well, and you can extend that to the you cloud, know? by the way, if you're willing to roll your own. Instead of going with a service that does it all like iDrive and has terms of services you got to pay attention to. You can buy from Amazon. They have a service called Glacier. Oh, yeah. Which oh, is ooh. exactly that idea, which is it's cheap long-term backup mm -hmm. uh, because they don't even keep it online. They move it offline. They put it somewhere. I don't know where in a closet somewhere in, in Jeff Bezos' garage. <laughs> mm -hmm. and they have so a Burke? The deal, the deal <laughs> is that it, it's going to be slow to get it back. Yeah. The premise being back, yeah. you're rarely going to ever want it back, but, but you can kind of guarantee it's going to be there forever. So, uh, that's that's uh, the Amazon and many many cloud storage companies have something similar. Yeah, Backblaze uh, I know does. Yeah, um, Wasabi does. Gla Glacier on Amazon is a good example of that, and it's pretty cheap. It's you know what you always want to look at with Amazon, for instance, is they charge you for egress. They charge you when mm -hmm. you're going to get the stuff. Now in this case, you don't care because you you're hoping uh, probably never going to need it. It's more like mm -hmm. belt and suspenders. It's an insurance policy, and so. You don't care how much they charge you for egress. You want it, you want it the lowest possible price for storage, and that's what Glacier does. It, it's it, 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 it's inexpensive to store, but it's time consuming and expensive to get back. But that's fine. As a, as a as a one who doesn't have all of the knowledge that you have, what I was thinking about this whole time is why don't I just have a script that looks at all of the files I have on my network attached storage and says if the files are two years or older, then compress them all into, you know, zip or even a, a more powerful uh, archive. And then they're there, but they're smaller, they're taking up less space, and then it just keeps doing that. And then if I ever need to, I can just uncompress them. So I'm making space for things. The problem is you can't really compress binary files, especially video files that uh, much. They're already pretty compressed. Okay. You're not going to get a lot of space back. I Got mean, it. Yeah, yeah, I don't even think about it with video. Photos, yeah, yeah but definitely don't even think about it with They're videos. already pretty compressed. That's the whole point. I guess you could convert it to H.265, which is a, a much more efficient codec over uh, MPEG-4. But uh, I wouldn't. That's a lot of time consuming. Yeah, transcoding. a lot of processing power. I was gonna say you, you yeah. have to what's your daughter re encode what, it. It takes a lot of juice. To exactly. Do that. What's your What's your daughter's name, uh, Cody? Eleanor. Eleanor. Oh. Do you call her Ellie? We call her Ellie. Yep. Oh, <laughs> such little a Ellie. So this happens so fast. My little Abby, who uh, is now thirty. Uh, <laughs> Uh, does want these old photos. I was very pleased in old videos. Uh, I had a video of her when she was about Ellie's age, maybe a little bit older, uh, showing me a drawing that she'd done. And I and I and I showed it to her, and she burst into tears. Oh. It was so cute. She was so happy to see it. So it, you're doing the right thing. One other thing I wish I had done, and everybody who has little kids should do this: create a Gmail account in their name. I think Gmail will be around for another 20, 30 years. I'm hoping. That's the one thing Google hasn't killed. Yeah. Create a <laughs> Gmail account in their name and send them an email every once in a while with some pictures in it. Just saying, hey, today we went to the park and uh, I took these pictures of you. Can you imagine oh, getting so those? Neat. You get to log into the email one age. day and oh. There's all these letters from I mom and dad. just cry. It is. It's just gonna. I, I think you talked about that on the radio show, and I actually took your advice and oh. set that up. Oh, oh that's no. amazing! Good call. Yeah, you're a good daddy. Hey, Cody, have a great day. It looks pretty cold. In, in did you say Duluth? 
Duluth, yeah, it's Duluth. pretty cold. It, it's four degrees according to my uh, my truck. It, oh. It's it's the warmest it's been for a while. Did you go into the truck so that Ellie wouldn't make noise? <laughs> He's napping. Yeah, so I'm outside, so I don't make any racket. Oh, though. so he wouldn't wake her up. Yeah, yeah that's a good yeah, dad. Look at that. Dad. Dad. Go back year. in good and cuddle grief. that special, special, special package. <laughs> that special that's baby. Right. Oh, I'm so jealous. Those are great days. I know it's hard work. It's the hardest work you'll ever do, but uh, you look back on it. It goes quick. It goes, it's, <laughs> it goes way too quick. Thanks. So great to talk to you, Cody. Thank you, sir. Have a Thank great everybody. day. Stay warm. Four degrees. Thanks. I don't remember what four degrees is like. <laughs> Thank you, Ant. I saw it. Thank you, Aunt Pruitt. Hands I don't on. want to know what four degrees feels Twitch. like. TV Good on. grief. You never lived anywhere cold? I've gotten down to nine, and that was cold enough. Bad. Oh, Missouri remember, gets down to negative temps, baby. I remember uh, five degrees in Toronto, but that's about as cold. Tech Break is brought to you by ACI Learning. Globally respected companies and agencies turn to ACI Learning year after year to help them maintain their competitive edge. Supporting organizations across audit, IT, and cybersecurity readiness, ACI Learning keeps organizations at the top of their game. Visit acilearning.com and let ACI level up your IT team.